Driving at Home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hey there, and happy Halloween. Today's episode marks six months, that's 27 straight weeks, of the Driving at Home podcast with ABOR's housing economist, Dr. Claire Losey. Claire, can you believe it's been that long already? Time has just flown, but it has been so much fun, and it's really an honor to be able to be here every week with our members. And guys, as a reminder, we launched this free member benefit so that in less than the time it takes for you to drive to a listing, you can get up to speed on the week's biggest economic and market news and then leverage that knowledge to be an expert for your clients. It's literally like having a housing economist in your pocket. And just so you know what to listen for today, we're going to be talking about three things. The Federal Reserve's meeting on Wednesday and what that will mean for your interest rates the latest building permit numbers for the Austin area, and this week's housing market stats. Plus, be sure to listen to the end of the episode for an awesome way that you can give yourself a competitive edge with lead generation and put money back in your pocket starting today, like for real today, the minute you stop listening to this podcast today. But okay, Dr. Losey, let's talk interest rates. Is the Fed going to celebrate Halloween by scaring us all with another rate hike? Well, I think I can safely say that the market certainly hopes not. Right now, the market is pricing in the probability of a rate hike to actually be zero. So 98% of market watchers are anticipating that the Fed will just hold rates steady in its November meeting, as well as a high likelihood, about 75%, that the Fed will hold rate steady in December as well. So there's kind of this idea that higher long-term interest rates, i.e. the 10-year Treasury yield, are really acting as a proxy for the Fed hiking rates. Great. And so what, so if we're steady through the end of the year, what does that look like going into 2024? Between 5.25% and 5.5%. So how that translates into the housing market is essentially that we shouldn't see any additional upward pressure on mortgage rates. What we've seen over the past several weeks, couple months now, right, is that the increase in the 10-year Treasury yield due to government sell-offs of Treasury bonds and then, of course, just broader economic uncertainty in inflating the lowering the demand for those bonds and causing yields to rise. What we've essentially seen is that mortgage rates have not only ticked higher, but of course remained elevated in the broader scheme of things. So broadly speaking, if the Fed does elect to pause its rate hikes in November and December, again, that means that there will be no additional upward pressure on mortgage rates. And we may even see rates come down slightly if the 10-year Treasury yield abates somewhat. That is awesome news. Okay, so agents, specifically buyer's agents, let's recap that in a way that you can tell your clients. That means that if you have a client or a lead that's on the fence about entering the housing market, now's the time to go in feet first. We have a little bit of stability through the end of the year, it sounds like where we're not going to have any higher interest rates. So if you have a buyer client, this is a great time to get pre-qualified and really work with your client to run the numbers and see what they can afford and then start looking at what inventory is out there. So this is good news that you definitely want to be sharing this week in the field. And then that goes, oh, go ahead, Claire. Oh, and I was just going to add to that if would-be buyers are anticipating that mortgage rates will decline in the near term, I would advise you as agents to advise them to be cautious about that line of thinking just because generally speaking we're not really expecting mortgage rates to decline at least to decline substantially by the end of the year or even moving into 2024 it's likely that mortgage rates are going to remain elevated so even if they do decline it will be you know tenths of percentage points not to the tune of say Two full percentage points, right? right? So if your buyers are thinking, oh, you know, I'm waiting for mortgage rates to fall to somewhere in the 5% range or even the low 6% range, you know, now it's not really looking like the time, really anytime soon that we're going to be in that kind of environment. 
got it. Well, that again, that is good to know and good to pass along to agents to advise. Now that goes next into what inventory is actually on the market in Austin, home sales and new building permits specifically for new construction plays a lot into that. We just got our September numbers in. What do they say, Claire? So generally speaking, the numbers are relatively favorable, especially given our higher rate environment, right? So anytime mortgage rates increase, that generally decreases home builder confidence. The reason being is, of course, one, they're anticipating a reduction in the demand for new homes as buyers face greater affordability constraints with higher rates. And then two, builders themselves have to incur higher costs of capital, right? And if they're holding these homes, new homes on their balance sheets for longer at a higher interest rate, that's just doubling their costs, right? So there's generally more reluctance to build when rates tick up. However, that being said, with respect to new permits for single family units, as well as just new housing permits overall, we're generally hovering around the same level that we saw last September, which is about the same level as we saw in September of 2019. So overall, the housing market with respect to new construction is generally well poised. We're seeing lower levels of construction than we saw in 2020 and 2021, but those were somewhat of anomalies, Mm -hmm. right? Just with the kind of frenzy right within the housing market during the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, a very low rate environment, which again, as we just discussed, decreased home builders' costs of capital. That is really good news to hear. I remember hearing agent stories of what it was like when inventory practically fell to zero, did I think hit zero at one point in between December 2020 and January 2021. And the new construction market worked really, really hard to try to regrain some of that ground, quite literally. But I'm glad to hear that it's that demand is consistent, that it's stable to pre-pandemic levels. That's good news for agents who are looking for some new listings and some new inventory that's hopefully in a more affordable price range for their clients. Right. And it's also important to note that one of the reasons that as agents, you should be considering what's happening in the new home market is, of course, as Danielle said, the new permits translate into potential listings for you all, not only, but also just add right to the broader stock of housing in the Austin market. And we know that throughout the MSA, we're facing a shortage of housing supply, especially a shortage of affordable inventory and any additional supply that we're adding to our housing market is going to help us, you know, towards our goal of reaching that more affordable level of housing inventory. And Dr. Losey, just for the for the purposes of any new agents who might be listening or if someone doesn't work much in the new construction space, when you hear building permits, let's put some time to that. What does building permits mean? How long can we expect of like, okay, in 18 months, that means homes on the ground with for sale signs out front? That's a great question, Danielle. And thanks so much for helping me clear that up. So I would generally say at a minimum, it's 12 months. And it's and I should preface this by saying it, it really depends on the type of construction. So are you building a starter home versus a luxury home, right? So with the former, it could be 12, but probably more so 18 months now, just with the increase in construction costs, the time to get construction materials, and even just the shortage in construction labor, et cetera. So probably looking closer to 18 months. With luxury homes, you're looking closer actually to probably 36 months, closer to the full three years. All right. That's good to know. So if you're in the luxury market, it could be three years before you see the impact of those permits. And if you're in the um, typical residential housing market, then it's probably, you know, maybe 18 months or something like that. So lastly, let's talk about the housing market. What are the latest numbers for this week? So broadly speaking, we remain fairly flat with respect to active listings New listings were down about 17% for sales and then about 13% for leases. And that's probably largely because, of course, mortgage rates average 
their highest in over 20 years last week at 7.79%. We're essentially at levels that we saw in 2000. So that's discouraging, right? Sellers from putting their homes on the market. But again, active listings remain essentially flat for both home sales and leases. Meanwhile, pending sales were down about 7%, 8% for both sales and leases. Closed sales were actually essentially flat, but of course, we're looking with closed sales at mortgage rates one to two months prior, right? Just with the timing it takes to close on a home. And then we saw just some more, an uptick really with respect to the number of homes withdrawn from the market. Hmm. So again, just a little bit of reluctance among sellers, right, to put their homes on the market right now. However, of course, we're also just dealing with the effects of seasonality. We know that fall and especially the winter months tend to be less popular among home buyers. So there's a little bit of the attitude of just you know, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenging time right now, just again, with the effect of seasonality and the higher rate environment. So if you're a listing agent, I mean, what do you attribute some of those withdrawals to? Is that just growing fear in the market or angst on the consumer side? Or is that, hey, I'm just going to sit tight and go through the holidays and then make it move? What do you think is driving some of that? Broadly speaking, I would say a little bit of a mix of what you just mentioned. There's definitely fear among potential sellers that they aren't going to have the response from buyers that they would otherwise want, right? And we've seen that through our original to close list price ratio, we've seen that sellers are having to you know, be a little bit more conciliatory with their final sales price on their home. The closed to original list price ratio is hovering around maybe 94% in September, so a little bit lower than on average. So yes, I think there's just a little bit of reluctance from sellers, again, just given the current month we're in, you know, again, the effect of seasonality, you know, they are very much aware too that fall and and winter months are less popular for home buying. And then there's also just the fact that sellers generally become buyers. Mm -hmm. So they may not want to enter the housing market themselves as buyers during a higher rate environment. Right. That's a really good point you make about just how the, the, this resetting of expectations for home sellers, and they've had a year to 18 months to do that. But it's well known right now that if you are listing a home or preparing to list a home and you don't have great curb appeal or there's needed improvements that need to be made, repairs, you are not going to get top dollar for your house. And your realtor will help you guide through in the best path forward for that and what the, for every decision you make, what the outcomes of that could be, risks and benefits. But for listing agents who may be a little discouraged by that, the news that Dr. Losey just gave hey, use this kind of stuff to your advantage. So if your seller client just told you that they want to sit or a lead just told you that they're not ready to list their home right now, tell them that about that curb appeal. Tell them, give them advice on ways that they can make maybe some simple upgrades to say the kitchen and bath hardware or repaint the house or get some new landscaping in. Do something, clean things up. This is a great time if they're wanting to to wait through the holidays to list use that as a coaching opportunity to how they can get top dollar for their home and take the advantage of the rest of the year to have that happen. So again, just recapping all of today, whether you're, I mean, when you agree, Dr. Losey, whether you're a buyer's agent or a listing agent, no matter what side of the transaction you're on, you do have a way to coach and encourage your clients through this time to get ready to make a sale and make a move. Absolutely. And to just To add to that, to what Danielle was saying, we have to remember that most homeowners stay in their residence for, on average, about nine to 10 years. So essentially, homeowners are remaining in their residence for longer than they were previously. So with that being said, would-be sellers are capturing, right, on average, that home equity that they 
experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic and even prior to that, right? But, you know, on average, sellers right now in the Austin market, you know, purchase their homes, say, in the mid-2010s. So they're sitting on a lot of home equity that they can kind of cash in, so to speak. So it's important to remember that even though they may not be achieving the sales price that they might have been able to during the height of the pandemic, they still benefited, right, from, they're still benefiting from the home equity that they accrued during the pandemic. I was so glad you brought that up. That is so important to be able to communicate that annual equity and generational wealth. And guys, if you are like, okay, well, how do I tell my client about that? Dr. Losi and Abor have already done the work for you. You just need to go to abor.com and download the buy versus rent index. Um, Claire, Dr. Dr. Losi put it out earlier this year at our Central Texas Housing Summit, and it forecasts for different client types, forecasts where it'd be better to buy or rent and those equity gains. So you'll have some hardcore data that you can apply specifically to your client and their situation. So go check that out if you haven't already. And lastly, I promised a big announcement at the end of this episode, and it's a good one. If you're listening to this podcast, then that means you're a smart agent and a smart ABOR member. And that means you also probably know that you have a $50 Austin Business Journal subscription. Well, starting today in the same email that you got this week's episode of Driving It Home In, we're announcing that ABOR benefit, that Austin Business Journal subscription is now completely free and covered within your ABOR membership. So that's a $200 value about a year. If you weren't already using this benefit before of that savings, if you were using it, it saves you another $50 a year. And then this is really, if you're not using the ABJ, you are leaving some money on the table. Their lead generation, they're breaking news about the way our community is growing. It really does give you a competitive edge in the market. And Dr. Lucy, I'm going to put you on the spot. Didn't tell you I was going to do this, but I mean, can you share just your own testimonial about how you use the Austin Business Journal to do your work as an economist? Absolutely. So I try to make a habit out of reading the ABJ every single day, at least the top headlines, just so I'm educated on what's happening in the Austin market. And I feel like I'm able to impart that information to our members, right, and include it in the research that we're disseminating at ABOR. And it's really just kind of that one-stop shop, right, for folks to be able to focus on what's happening in the Austin economy and things that their clients may be having questions about themselves. You can find answers in the articles and just be able to be a more informed agent yourself. All right, guys. So you heard it here from an expert housing economist. If she is using the ABJ Daily as a one-stop shop for news, then that definitely means that your business will benefit too. So go, we'll have this in the show notes, but go to abor.com slash ABJ. stands for Austin Business Journal to claim your account. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to claim an account. You can also just go to your member portal, click on the green ABJ tile, and you will go straight into the ABJ website. No login required. That's it for now. Thank you so much for that. All this information, Claire. And everyone, stay safe, stay dry, stay warm. Have a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, guys. Thanks. Thanks.